I'm Zemetria Anderson, and I'm going to bring you another moment in women's history. Wait, did I say that I was a partner of hope? I'm a partner of hope. I was born December 23rd, 1867, down in the Delta of Louisiana. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. I look pretty good for my age. My life was bold, full of love, full of tenacity, and full of firsts. I was the first of five siblings to be born free after the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. Hmm. And I would later go on to be the first of something way bigger. Whether it's fried, dyed, or laid to the side, I created a staple product that was for the staple of women and some men too. I was first married at the age of 14 and out of that union, I birthed my daughter, but it wasn't until my third marriage that I got my infamous name. You may think you know who I am, but do you really? Don't worry. I'll give you a few minutes to think about it. I... And Madam C.J. Walker. I know. Give yourself a hand. You got it. <laughs> After suffering a scalp ailment that caused me to lose my own hair, I had had enough. I tried store-bought products. I tried kitchen concoctions. And I finally got the formula right. I gave birth to my miracle hair grow 
And boy, did it grow. Not only did it allow me to create a revenue for myself and buy my home and provide for my family, but it also allowed me to give contributions to organizations such as the YMCA, the National Council of Negro Women, and the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. And guess what? Come here. It was even here in Daytona with my contribution to Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune's Daytona Education and Industrial School for Negro Girls. That's right. I contributed to our very own BCC. By 1913, my hair grow was flourishing and so was Harlem. I was inspired by the arts and music and sounds and sights of the Harlem Renaissance that I just needed to grow, be big, be bold. And my daughter would later convince me to allow her to open an office in a beauty salon in Harlem. By 1917, boy, was I bold. I created my own company. I employed 20,000 women and I was even creating revenue for that Charles Joseph. You get it, Madam C.J. Walker. It was through my contributions and my famous friends such as W.E.B. Du Bois, Booker T. Washington, and Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune that I became a household name and a staple in our community for freedom and boldness and drive and passion. <laughs> All of that would later allow me to go on to be the first of something else. I was the first self-made female millionaire. Don't believe me? Check the Guinness Book of World Records. It was quotes like, don't sit down and wait for opportunities to come. Get up and go get them. That spoke to my life and legacy. My hair care line and company are still flourishing today. This has been a moment in women's history. Remember, I'm Madam C.J. Walker. Have a great day. My name is Cam. Thank you for watching. And it's Women's History Month. Do you know who this amazing woman is? She was the first pick in the 2008 WNBA draft. She was the first woman to dunk in a college game. Who is she? If you answered Candace Nicole Parker, you were right. Peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. My name is John Paul McGee and I'm the lead pastor of Hope Fellowship Church, Hope Daytona, Hope North, and yes, Hope Online. All of you, our family members, our friends, our partners, our supporters from all of, over the country and various portions of the world, and yes, in Flagler and Volusia counties, we greet all of you. The, the members in Seminole County, greetings members in Brevard County. Greetings everywhere. We greet you in the only name that matters, the matchless name of our Christ. We are so glad that you're worshiping with us. If it's your first time, please tell us that in the comment box so that we can show you some love through hearts, through thumbs up. And we're going to contact you just to say thank you for being a part of our worship experience. I believe that God has something special planned for you today. The worship is going to be exalting to his name, but also uplifting to our soul. I believe that the word that God has given me to share in the sermon today is going to be edifying and challenging uh, for your life and I can't wait to share that with you so I want you to come on in the room come on in the room we want to honor all of the amazing women of God we've been doing women's history tributes all month long to amazing women amazing black women especially we celebrate and we honor God for you it's week three of March Madness and every week God has been uh, breathing unto me spiritual uh, intelligence from basketball terms, because it's March Madness season in the NCAA, but it's also a mad season in many of our lives. Got a lot going on. Still a lot going on in the world. Sickness and death and COVID and 
non-COVID related illnesses, a lot of changes and transitions in life and in ministry. But in the midst of all of the madness, we have to maintain ourselves firmly rooted and grounded in the faith because we're being built up into a holy house uh, for the Lord. And so uh, we looked at several terms. We looked at the term pivot, where God wants us to keep our, our footing planted, but to remain flexible. Uh, we looked at the term post up, which means to be ready to receive, uh, not just the ball and basketball, but be ready to receive whatever's passed to us in our lives. I believe that the blessings are being passed to us, miracles are being passed to us, so on and so forth. This week, the term that the Lord has laid on my heart is rebound. A rebound, in basketball happens when there's been a missed basket. Somebody tries to make what's called in basketball a field goal. They miss it, but there's somebody there, whether offensively or defensively, that's ready to catch the ball. Don't miss that. The shot was missed, but there's somebody there to position themselves to catch the ball, to help their team either try again or to help their team get a shot in the opposition. So here's what I'm trying to tell you. There'll be times where you don't make it. There'll be times where you fall. There'll be times where you miss the mark. There will be times where, where you try and you don't succeed. But I want to speak the word rebound over your life. I got two words I want to give you. Try again. If that ministry effort didn't work, try it again. If, if, if that entrepreneurial pursuit didn't work, try it again. If, if you flunked out of school, but you still have a passion burning in you to get your education, try again. I want to speak over your life that you're going to rebound, that you're going to be positioned Yes, Lord, to try again. And this time you'll succeed. I want to speak rebound over your life. Can you write that in the comment box? Say, I'm going to rebound. I, I, I'm going to rebound. I'm coming back. I'm telling you, you're coming out of the ashes. You're coming out of the bottom. You're coming out of the dredges. And you're going to have the opportunity to put yourself in position to try again. Whatever that means for you. There's so many of you watching. And this applies to you in so many different areas of your life. I want you to grab it in the Holy Ghost. I want you to grab that. That you will rebound. You will rebound. So I need you to grab that ball so that you can try again. I'm so glad you joined us in worship. It's so good to be over here at Derbyshire Park, uh, just in this moment of impartation and prayer. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. Bless us in this service. Let your power and your anointing and your glory be revealed. We pray for the salvation of souls, the deliverance of minds, the healing of bodies. Father, the, the transformation of lives today. Let it be so. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's worship. Good morning. Welcome to Hope Fellowship Church. We are so glad that you are tuning in with us this morning. While you are on the broadcast, go ahead on and like, comment, and share. Be the evangelist on your social platform and share the broadcast. Listen, we hope that we are a blessing to you this morning. Right now, we come to do what we've come to do, which is lift up his name. Come on, type in the comments, I come to lift up his name. Why don't you help me lift him? Come on, help me lift him up. Come on, open up your mouth in your home and lift up the name of Jesus for who he is.
Jesus. If I'll be lifted up, I'll draw the men unto me. Come on, lift his name. Hallelujah. That name has power. That name is above every name. Hallelujah. It's a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are safe. Come on, let's declare the light of the world. Jesus.
If you can see the light coming, you ought to write it down in the comment box and say it, it won't last. Trouble don't last always. We big may end up for the night, but joy comes, come in the morning. Come on, y'all ought to just groove if you believe it. You ought to just groove if you believe it. Come on, right there at home, in your kitchen, in your bedroom, in your dining room. You ought to get excited. Yeah, yeah. Y'all stay right there. I'm going to go old school real quick. Trouble don't last always. No, no, no trouble don't last always. Come on, let me hear y'all say that in one voice. Yeah. Trouble don't last always. Yeah. No, no. No, no, no trouble don't last always. Come on, you ought to testify that to your trouble don't last. Trouble don't last always. No, 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 no. No, 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 trouble don't last always. Come on, weeping indoors for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I reckon that the suffering of this present time cannot be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in trouble. Give him some praise. Come on and give him some praise if you believe it. Come on, I said give him some praise. If you believe, it won't last. But your word will come to pass. Oh, you ought to write it in the comment box and say there's a word over my life. Come on, prophesy it to yourself. I said there's a word over my life. There's a word over my life. There's a prophecy over my life. And guess what? I'm not going to die and I'm not going to quit until it happens. I wish I had somebody in here that would open up your mouth and say, trouble don't last always. I can see the light. I can see the light. Woo! Yeah! I can see the light. We got to go, we got to go and move past this, but walk in the light. Beautiful light, oh, come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all, shine all around us by day and by night. Let's go old school as we get ready for the word.
God bless you. We are so glad that you have joined us this morning in the sanctuary. What an amazing day this is that the Lord has created the third Sunday in the month of March. It's March Madness here at Hope Fellowship Church, the Victory Center. And as you can see, we are, we are Team Hope, but most importantly, we are Team Jesus. Amen. And we're so excited about what the Lord is doing, has done, and will continue to do. And I want to take a moment and welcome each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. Hope North, Hope Daytona, Hope Online, which is all of us. I want to say to you, we are so glad that you have joined us this morning. I hope by now that you've already pressed that share button. You know what to do. It's free 99 to do that. And as I say, on a weekly basis. One share can save someone's life. You never know how much a word, how much a song, how much a prayer will be able to impact and influence someone. And so we are so glad that you are with us. We want you to be blessed by the rest of this experience. If you don't know Jesus, you'll get to know him today. If you already know Jesus and need a church home, we want you to be a part of our family if, that, if that's what the Lord is leading you to do. Um, if you're cool with all of that, but you just scroll by and said, hey, I'm worshiping with Hope today. We're glad to have you. So listen, I believe our music ministry is going to come with one final selection, and uh, then we're going to come to the word of the Lord, correct? Oh, no, they're already done singing. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. They're looking at me like, <laughs> they're looking at me like, bro, we done sang today. Praise the Lord. So I guess walk in the light was the <laughs> selection. Amen. We have fun in the house of the Lord. Let's give God praise. Can you show some hearts and some thumbs up for our music ministry, our band, all of our singers. God bless you. Our audio video tech team that makes this such an enjoyable experience for us to be able to uh, worship the Lord in spirit and in truth and have a tangible anointing that's reachable uh, to your house and to wherever you may be. I want to take a moment and thank God for those who stream us that are not in the United States of America. We have persons on a weekly basis that join with us from India, from Pakistan, from South Africa, uh, from South America and Central America. We're able to see that on behind the scenes. And we want to take a moment and thank God for all of our non-American brothers and sisters that are touched by this experience from week to week. We thank the Lord for you. Amen. I want to jump into this word. Um, as I say every week, I will not be long. I think I've held to that last week and I'm going to do the best I can uh, to do the same this week. Um, word of the Lord uh, this morning comes from the book of Proverbs, the wisdom literature of King Solomon, the wisest one outside of Jesus to have ever walked this earth. And uh, Proverb does not uh, have a lot of narrative or story associated with it, but it's a collection of sayings. Um, sometimes they're metaphorical, oftentimes they're very practical that um, give us knowledge and simplicity for being able to live um, a life that is practically righteous and holy. Um, and so um, as I've been processing what the Lord would have me to share with the people of God, um, I do want to go to the Proverbs this morning. Proverbs chapter number 19 and verse number 21. Hear now what Solomon writes there in Proverbs 19, verse 21. He says, you can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. You can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. For just a few moments, I want to preach from this thought in our mind. Uh, our plans, God's purpose. Our plans, God's purpose. For obvious reasons, my brothers and my sisters, I've been in a very reflective and pensive state over the last several weeks as I pray through and process the next steps of my journey in life and ministry. And I'll admit transparently that while endeavoring to continue projecting a public image of joy and happiness that privately my emotions have run the gamut of feelings on the feeling wheel. Uh, sometimes uh, angry, sometimes sad, sometimes uh, in disbelief, sometimes confused, uh, 
sometimes just blah. <laughs> um, and, and, and I think what got me to that space is the fact that yet again, I'm forced in life with another occurrence of things not going as I planned. Um, admittedly, those who work with me, alongside me, and know me to any level, I'm very much so a type A personality. I plan my work, I work my plan, I like things just so. And um, life does not work that way. Um, as I've been thinking through that, um, and my own self-admitted control issues, <laughs> um, how I want my life to go and think it should go, um, I really found myself fighting not to get into a sunken place. And uh, sometimes they tell us as preachers we should not be vulnerable, but I, I believe that vulnerability and transparency is necessary. I think it's dangerous to be exposed, but it's important to be transparent and vulnerable. And so I was having this conversation with myself, like, man, yet again, here we are. The plan is not going the way I want it to go. And just as I was about to really allow myself to sink into an emotional, psychological hole, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, your life may not be going as planned, but it is going as purposed. Amen. I want to say that again because it's not just for me. Somebody out here needs to hear that. Your life may not be going as planned, but it is going as purposed. What's a plan, Pastor? A plan is a detailed proposal for doing or achieving something. Well, then what's purpose? Purpose pertains to the reason for which something exists. And so as I began to think through life and think through how God has taken me back to go forward and around the backside of the mountain and all of these various uh, incongruent, nonlinear motions that my life has taken, although it did not align with my plan, it fits perfectly into God's greater purpose, the reason for which I exist. I, I, I never planned to come to Bethune-Cookman College. I planned to go to Morehouse College, but God's purpose was that I come to Bethune-Cookman. And so in 2002, um, I met our founder at the Full Gospel Conference in Baltimore, Maryland. There the Holy Spirit said that I would be a part of his ministry. And I didn't even know where his ministry was. And I'm like, well, if it ain't in Atlanta, then I must not be uh, a part of it because I'm going to Morehouse. But I went and visited Morehouse, and the Lord said, not yet. And I wound up coming to Bethune-Cookman on a full scholarship and wound up being here, seated here in ministry for approximately nine years. Wasn't my plan, but it was God's purpose. Little did I know that part of God's purpose would be to bring me to the Atlanta area. And that although I would not be a student at Morehouse College, I would still be a student at the, at the Interdenominational Theological Center, which is a part of the AUC, right next to Morehouse College. And so once I left Daytona Beach in 2011 and began my sojourn as the pastor of worship at the St. James United Methodist Church in, in Alpharetta, Georgia, I realized that although St. James was never in my plan, it was in God's purpose. Then, little did I know that I would make a second tour of duty back here to Daytona Beach. This time not to serve on staff as uh, an associate pastor of Hope Fellowship Church, but to be the lead pastor, the senior pastor, the under shepherd of the congregation. Never was a part of my plan. But it fits squarely in the purposes of God. And I need somebody who's watching me right now in, in this very sober moment to understand that most often your life will not go as you desire or plan it. But when you submit and trust God, you will live into the purpose 
that God has set from before the foundation of the world. God has a way through the situations of life of showing those of us who live lives that are submitted to the will of God the very stark difference between our plans and God's purpose. Our plans are finite. What does that mean? That, that, that means that plans are humanly contrived. These are things that we come up with in our minds and through our intelligence and through our thoughts and our reflection. And typically our plans are executed according to human logic and human reason. So you were taught, many of us were taught, you go to school, you get an education, you get a good job, you start a family. You retire and you enjoy life. That just seems like the linear way. But for many of you who are out there who are retired or headed towards retirement, you would say that your life wasn't that nice or that neat. Our plans are finite. But God's purpose is infinite. The infinite purpose of God means that God, the purpose is divinely inspired. And that purpose is manifested according to the sovereign will of God. Plans, human contrived. Purpose, divinely inspired. Since purpose is divinely inspired, then it is important for us to understand that God's purpose will always dominate human planning. Furthermore, God's purpose will most often deviate from what we in our finitude devise. As our mortality, our humanity, us being uh, a human and frail and flawed, uh, it, it precludes us in our humanity and mortality from knowing and having a full understanding of God's immortal purpose. We, 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 we see, the Hebrew writer says, through a glass darkly. So watch this. What you see and what I see may be completely clear, but it's not all there is to see. Let me say that one more time. The piece we see may be clear, but God has not shown us the whole picture because we won't see the whole picture until we see him. When we see him, the Bible says, we'll be like him. We'll know as he knows. We'll understand as God understands. We'll reason as God reasons. But that's not until the eschaton, until the end of time. As we are sojourning on this natural terra firma, we only know what God allows us to know through revelation. And here's what we need to understand then of God revealing his purpose through revelation that God's only plan is to fulfill his purpose. I need to say that one more time. I need to say that one more time for somebody that's struggling with letting your life go to the control and the leading of the Holy Spirit, that God's only plan is to fulfill his purpose. But here's the problem. The problem is that God's methodology does not always align with how we think. How God moves, how God maneuvers, how, how, how God uh, does what God does uh, is, is different than how we contrive because the Bible says that his ways are not our ways. They're just not. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. As a matter of fact, let me get the text right. It says his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are higher than ours. ours. Paul says, who has known the mind of the Lord in order to become the Lord's counselor? God does not function in a linear uh, way. God does not function in a way that accommodates natural order. Let me see if I can put a little bit more Bible on it. Watch this. Uh, in, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. And God said, let there be light. That was day one. But it wasn't until day four that God created the sun, which was the greater light to rule the day, and the moon, which was the lesser light to rule the night. So when God created light on day one, he did not create the materials 
for the population of light until day four. It makes no natural sense to us, but what God does does not usually make natural sense because God is not natural. God is supernatural. And so in order to understand and in order to walk into the purpose of God, we must divorce ourselves from linear thinking. It's not going to be A, B, C, D, E, and F. It may be A, F, M, B, Z, D. It, it, you remember those coloring books where, where they would have the numbers all over the book, but if you followed the numbers, even though it made absolutely no sense the way we were zigzagging, the picture would come out exactly the way it was supposed to look, but we had to take a moment and trust that the numbers not being in order, not being next to each other, would actually produce the intent for which the picture was created. God's order does not fit human structure. I need you to write that as I'm teaching. I need you to write that. God's order does not fit human structure. And beloved, this can be frustrating. This can be frustrating because it causes those of us who desire to live out the purposes of God and it causes those of us who truly want to manifest God's will in our life at times when you're living for purpose and not according to plan, it will cause us to feel like we are carelessly thrown about from moment to moment. We're, we're thrown from context to context, from situation to situation, from job to job, from place to place. Uh, moving from this place in the country to another place in the country or, or it, it just seems all over the place and it seems like God moves you with no consideration for our desires or your ambition or my goals or our ideas but here it is that's the life of faith the life of faith saints is one that only submits to divine providence and not only do you submit then to divine providence but the life of faith is one that willfully participates in divine purpose because purpose is not revealed to us all at one time but purpose is revealed as we walk through the evolution of time so here it is I've got to do my part and you've got to do your part in our humanity to live responsibly according to the wisdom of the Holy Spirit and the measure of logic that God has given us. And so that means that I plan and you plan and we plan and we execute life proactively while simultaneously remaining open to the dynamism of the Holy Ghost. So as I plan, as you plan, as we execute, as we contrive ideas, uh, hopefully along with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Ghost job is to lead us uh, even with our plans or without them into the fulfillment of God's divine purpose by whatever means necessary. So here it is. Are, are you with me as I teach this? Here we go. So by all means, we should plan. Let me say that one more time. So I don't want you to hear this and say, well, the Holy Ghost is just going to leave me, so I don't need to do nothing. No, we must plan. Solomon, when he wrote this verse, he was not throwing shade at planning. Because he says many are the plans in the human heart. So we ought to have goals. We ought to have plans. We ought to have dreams. We ought to have ideas. We ought to have ambitions. We ought to have motivations. We ought to have pursuits. And we ought to have them without needing angels with fairy dust to release something upon us so that everything is God said. Everything is not going to be God said. You have a mind, you have a brain, you have a heart that has been conditioned and, and, and also that has been, uh, yes Lord, that has been seared uh, with the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. The blood of Jesus has been released upon it, which causes you then, if you are a spirit-filled believer, to be able to walk in the wisdom of God without God always having to tell you something. So you plan wisely you 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 come up with ideas wisely and you do the best you can to pursue a healthy happy life however the awareness of divine purpose should cause you to understand that even when you plan even when you execute and even when you're coming up with your next idea your next concept your next move that 
God has the power, the authority, and the permission without your consent to decide that whatever your plans may be may not necessarily fit into the greater purpose that God has for you. So, make the plans. And, and here's why you should make the plans, because this is a prophecy for about 30 of you that are watching. You should make plans because God is going to allow many of the things that you plan to manifest. So this is not a sermon that says, don't plan. This is a sermon that says, yes, you need to plan because there's some things that you have in your mind and in your heart that once you start executing them, God's going to manifest them to, your glory, to his glory and to your gain. However, when you master the art of planning, remember who has the master plan. I need to say that one more time. When you master the art of planning, remember who has the master plan. So we ought not be so tied to what we plan that we cease to leave space for the move of God. And the move of God in this text is seen in one word, and that word is but. Many are the plans in a man's heart or a woman's heart, or as the New Living Translation says, you can make many plans. But, okay, y'all missed the place to shout. Y'all missed the place to put some hearts and some thumbs up in the comment box. The, the move of God in this verse is through the word but. You can make many plans, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will prevail. All right, so I see why you're not shouting yet. I see why you're not talking back to me because you haven't yet understood the power of but. But is a powerful word in scripture that when it comes to God, when you see but in the scriptures, it introduces divine activity that supersedes or positively shifts what was happening before. Example, I once was young, but now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. Okay, uh, what's another example? Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers. Y'all see that? So yes, the righteous are afflicted, but the move of God is that God delivers. Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you that he might sift you like wheat, Jesus said. But, yeah, I prayed for you Yes, Lord, that your faith fail not, and when you are converted, that you strengthen your, uh, your brethren. But is a powerful word in Scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but that's where the turn happens, have everlasting life. Scarcely would one die for someone who is righteous, but God committed himself toward us so much that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Saints, I've learned how to shout and to trust God on the word but because but tells me that even if what happened before the but was good, that when God superimposes himself in the situation, that when God throws himself in a fresh way into the context, into the construct, or into the framework, then we know that whatever was good is going to get better. And even if what in the natural caused the but seems unexpected and seems unlikely and seems unbelievable, and unfair and unreasonable and unjustified even if what precedes the but seems insensitive or improper or ill-intended or ill-motivated we cannot focus on what comes before the but because to focus on what caused the but will anchor us in an unhealthy attachment to our plans and to the pain that unfulfilled plans brings but when we look at whatever that's going on in our lives and, and when we can look at it and shift our minds into a different space uh, then victory is the outcome I need somebody to write that in the comment box write it down that victory is the outcome God's purpose is going to win yeah I, I need to say that one more time 
God's purpose is going to win. Can you write that in the comment box? Write it down and say, God's purpose is going to win. Write it down. Say, God's purpose is going to win. God's purpose is going to win. Victory is going to be the outcome. But here it is. We won't experience the prevail. We won't experience the victory unless we participate. You, you got to write down, say, uh, my victory is based on my participation. Your participation in what? Your participation in the plan of God. And the plan of God is only to fulfill God's purpose. God's going to win regardless. Let me say that one more time. God is going to win regardless. And the only way we can win is if we find a way to lean into the purpose of God and let God handle what we can't. I'm talking to somebody this morning. I'm, 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 I'm trying to teach healing into your spirit this morning. God's purpose is going to win, but the only way that we win along with God is when we lean into God's purpose purpose. Here's what I've currently learned and I'm learning in my life. That God is big enough, hallelujah to Jesus, yes Lord, God is big enough to correct the malpractice and create a miracle at the same time. Let me say that one more time. Because there's some things that have been done to some of you there, there's some things that you've gone through, yes, that you did not deserve, that, that should not have happened to the, to the most likely of human beings. Even the worst human beings shouldn't have experienced what some of you have, have experienced. And so I know that times and sermons like these that uh, cause you to think about your journey in life uh, cause us in many cases, to wrestle with the sovereignty of God. And so you begin to ask yourself questions like, well, was it in God's plan for me to get molested? Was it in God's plan for me to get divorced? Was it in God's plan for me to go through this hurt? Was it in God's plan for me to get an eviction? Was it in God's plan for my house to be foreclosed upon? What, 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 what was it in God's plan? But here's what I've come to understand is that because we are free moral agents, God has given us and gifted us with the ability to do whatever we want to do. But even when we're doing whatever whatever we want to do. There's nothing that we can do that will ever stand in the way of God's purpose because God is smarter than us. God is more intellectual than us. God has a master plan, a meta narrative that is greater and grander than all of us could ever imagine. There are things in your life, brothers and sisters, that will ruin your plan. But I promise you that there's nothing that can happen to you there's nothing that can happen to me. There's nothing that can happen to any of us that will ever ruin, change, or adjust God's purpose because God's purpose was decreed and established from before the very foundation of the world. God's purpose in his eminence anticipates our free moral agency and God anticipates our tendency to meddle in and disrupt his intent. So yes, we can be able to change the plan of God, but we can do nothing to stop his purpose. Oh, I'm arguing the text today, and I know some of you are very uncomfortable, but you, pro you will be okay. We can interrupt and mess up in the plan of God, but we cannot do anything with the purpose of God. Okay, here it is. Y'all want some Bible for it. It was never in God's plan for Adam and Eve to sin because there is no sin in God. There is no darkness of God. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that the light and darkness can't even inhabit the same space. So it was never in God's plan for Adam and Eve to sin, but it was always in God's purpose for God to be full of compassion and full of mercy. So although they changed his plan, his plan was for them to have dominion and exercise dominion over the whole earth and to live in paradise and to never know what death or pain or sickness was like. But even though that was his his plan for them, sin changed his plan, but it did not change the purpose because when they found uh, that animal in the garden and they cut the animal and the blood was shed and they covered themselves with the skins of the animal, God's purpose was always that there would be covering for our mistakes. The blood would always cover. It was never in God's plan for Jonah to go to Tarshish. No, it was never in God's plan. Why? Because God told him to go where? Come on, Bible scholars. He told him to go to Nineveh. He should not have gone to Tarshish. That was not God's plan. But the, but, but the big fish 
in the sea, yes, Lord, is a representation of the purpose of God. God's purpose for Jonah was to preach the message of repentance in Nineveh. And so what God did is God had a hiding place for Jonah. And the hiding place was in the belly of a great fish that spit him out at the place that he started to give him another chance to do it again. God's plan was for him to go to Nineveh the first time. But God's purpose preempted Jonah's plan, which was never to go. It was never in God's plan to have to give his only begotten son. How do you know that? Because sin was never in the plan of God. And the reason why Jesus came in the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the reason that Jesus came, yes, in, in, in all of his humility and gave up his robe and glory, the reason why he came was in order to solve and save Solve the sin, deliver, and save those who were lost. So, was, that wasn't, sin was never in God's plan. But God's purpose is connected to the reason that things exist. So I say this to you in closing. Paul says it this way. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worth being compared Glory to God. With the glory that shall be revealed in you. So the suffering may not be in the plan of God, but the suffering is in the purpose of God. Because what you're going through now is working for you. Ooh, I need somebody to write that in the comment box and say, what I'm going through right now is working for you. For me, It may not be working with you, but it's working for you. <laughs> it may not feel helpful to you, but it is working for you. He says it can't be compared with what I'm doing. You just can't see what I'm doing. So your eyes are stuck in the suffering. You don't understand the glory that's on the other side of it. All things. All things, saints. Yeah, all things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. Or, or, or better yet, I believe it's the NIV that says it uh, a, a, a bit better than the King James Version. If you look at the NIV, it says, and in all things, God is working. See, we quote all things work together. And when we say that from an, from an English syntactical standpoint, it appears that the things are working. All things work. Yeah, so it makes things the subject of the sentence. But here's what I need you to understand. There's not a thing in this world that without God's help that can work for you. In all things, God is working together for good to those that love him and are the called according to his purpose. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't look good. You don't understand it. People do you wrong. The job at, at the house, husband acting crazy, wife don't got no sense, the cat and the dog lost their mind as well, but it's still, God is still working it. <laughs> I need somebody to write it down in the comment box and say, God is working it. God is working it. No weapon. Formed against you. It's not in God's plan that the weapon be formed. No, no, no. That's not the plan of God. The, 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 God is not evil. God is not masochistic. God is not aiming to hurt you. But God understands the frailty and the finitude of humankind. Matter of fact, you look in Genesis, part of the reason that God destroyed the, wor er, the world, the earth, in a flood is because he said that the thoughts of their minds were continually evil all the time. God understands what sin has done to our consciousness. So we understand that in our free moral agency that we will often form weapons against ourselves and others. And he also understands that the prince of the power of the air, which is Satan, Beelzebub, the lion, dragon, whoever you want to call him, is always going to be at work opposition. He is the accuser of the brethren. So he understands that the weapon will be formed even though it may not be in his central plan. But here's what he says, it won't prosper. It, it won't work because he wishes above all things that we prosper, that's purpose. And be in good health, even as our soul's purpose. 
even as our souls prosper. So I, I say the words to the song that the Lord allowed me uh, over 20 years ago now to write with Jonathan Nelson that is charting on Billboard today called Manifest. And it says, pregnant possibilities, now birthing anew, travailing to obtain it, for it must come to pass. I decree it, I declare it, I call it in the spirit to become what God's designed me to be. Second verse says, your future, your promises shall be fulfilled. Yes, you shall obtain it. For it must come to pass. I decree it, declare it, and call it in the spirit to become what God's designed me to be. I want to prophesy that over you today that nothing can interrupt the purpose of God in your life. You have plans, but I promise you, if you submit your plan to God and say, God, here are my plans, work them for your purpose, your life will be so much easier. Your spirit will be so much freer. You'll be so much less stressed out. Part of our stress is connected to our need to control. And God is saying, you don't control me. So some of us are struggling. But God, they did, they did, he did, she did. I say, yeah. And you didn't stop them. No. He says, I'm going to take care of all that. You just lean into my purpose. You just lean into my great plan for you. For I know. Hallelujah. The thoughts and the plans that I have for you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a hope and to bring you to your expected end. Whoa. In other words, to bring you to purpose. Woo. God says, I'm bringing you to purpose. By any means necessary, I'm bringing you to purpose. You, you left too early, I'm going to use your leaving too early to bring you to purpose. You stayed too late, I'm going to use your staying late to bring you to purpose. Because you will not shut your eyes in death until the plans and purposes of God have been fulfilled for you. So yes, yeah, some people say, well, yeah, they're gone too soon. And there are some times where God allows people to die seemingly before their time but I promise you because we still see through a glass darkly when we get to that great place that great getting up moment morning when we get there we'll understand that there was even purpose in that I hear the Holy Ghost say it's not your job to understand it's your task to trust it's your task to trust I got to say this because it's heavy on my spirit. There's somebody that's struggling in a marriage, abusive marriage to be very specific, domestic violence. And the enemy is trying to use the words from this message to convince you that you should stay. You say, well, if he's going to work it out. No, 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 no. This is not an excuse for abuse. This, this, is, this, this is not making room for the misuse of you as a human being. No, in all things we have wisdom. So my sister, my brother, if they're putting their hands on you, if it's emotional abuse, you leave. You get out of that. You don't stay in that. You don't stay in that. But I promise you, in your leaving, that may not have been in your plan and that may not have been in God's plan, but you're, you'll see purpose through it. That's why I love the old saints that would say, by and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God are gathered together at home. 
We'll tell the story of how we overcome and we'll understand it better by and by. Can you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we will manifest your power. We want to manifest your purpose and your will. Father, we say, as you taught your disciples to pray, let your kingdom come. Let your domain, your king's reign, let it come. Let your will be done in earth as it already is in heaven. Father, we submit to your will. You said you give more grace to those who are humble. You said if we resist the devil, he will flee. The devil tries to get us to do our own thing and to function in our finitude. But Lord, we pray that we would have a will to allow your spirit to lead and guide us into all truth. So we say yes to you. We say yes to you. Even when we don't understand, even when we don't like it, even when we don't feel it, even when we're challenged, even when we're angry, even when we're upset, even when we're excited, even when we're joyous and we're happy, God help us at all times to have a yes so that we may manifest who you designed us to be. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. I'll become what God's designed me to be. I want to release this to you. You are what God's designed you to be. I hope you believe that. You are what God's designed you to be. Just lift up your hands right there and worship the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Just type it in the comment box as you worship. Just type, I will manifest God's purpose. I will manifest God's purpose. Oh, there's a spirit of freedom that's been released in your house even now. I will manifest God's purpose. I will manifest God's purpose. I won't be stopped. I won't be blocked. There's nothing that the enemy can do about this. He has no jurisdiction over your purpose. I got to say that again. The enemy does not have any jurisdiction over your purpose or God's purpose. The very reason for which God has placed you in the earth, as you lean into it, it shall come forth. Behold, I will do a new thing in you, says the Lord, and behold, it shall spring forth. I will make rivers in the desert. I will give you streams in the wasteland. Every mountain shall be made low and every valley shall be exalted and the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it together. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. So listen, my brothers and my sisters, I want to give you the opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior so that you can live in purpose. His purpose for coming. He says, I've come to seek and to save those who are lost. I've come to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but not only to them, I've come to the Jews and the Gentiles alike. So my brother, my sister, to the utmost, Jesus says, I don't care what you've done. I don't care how filthy you feel. I don't care what lifestyle you're living. There is nothing that is beyond the love of God. There's nothing you could do to make God love you any more or love you any less than God has already loved you. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to receive Jesus today. You would say, I've walked away from Jesus. I want you to walk back toward him. And just like that father did it with the prodigal son, he'll meet you as he sees you walking. He's already coming. He's already there beckoning you to come. So Father, draw now by your spirit. Pray this prayer with me if you would. Dear God, I come to you now. I admit that I've sinned and I need your grace. Come into my heart and save me. I believe you died for me so that I can have eternal life. Fill me with your spirit so that I can live for you. I believe as a result of my confession that I am now saved. My brother or my sister, if you just said that prayer for the first time sincerely, I want you to know that you are on your way to developing a relationship with Jesus Christ. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to write your name in the comment box and say, I want to give my life to Jesus. Write it down. I want to give my life to Jesus. If you're watching in the 
repost or if you're watching live, write that down. Write your name down. Write your name down right now. If you're watching live, I want you to dial this number, 386-222-7480. 386-222-7480. And you will be connected with one of our counselors who will make sure that you have all of the information that you need in order to move forward in your discipleship. For those of you who say, Pastor, I'm saved, but I believe that this is the church that God has called me to connect with. God is yet and still drawing. Even in this virtual space, you can connect with us and we are fully equipped to serve you all around the world, all around this country. You don't have to be in Flagler County, Volusia County, or even the state of Florida. You would say, Pastor, I am drawn to this ministry. I believe that God wants me covered under this anointing. If that is you, my brother, my sister, write your name in the comment box, whether live or in the repost. If you're watching live today, on Sunday, March 21st, what I want you to do is I want you to call the number 386-222-7480 so that we can minister to you. Pastor, I'm saved. I got a church home, but I need prayer. If you're watching this service live, you can dial that same number. Dial that same number. It's right there on the screen, and our prayer team will be there to pray with you, to pray you through whatever you're dealing with. If you're watching the rebroadcast, you can send us an email at prayer at hopefellowship.org. And our prayer team meets every Monday and every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. to call upon the name of the Lord on your behalf. Send in your prayer request. We know that God is able, God is a healer, and God will do just what he said. It's time to give in the house of the Lord. And we are so excited about that. We're gonna manifest generosity. Somebody say that in the comment box. Say, I manifest generosity. Yes, and as you manifest generosity, you will also manifest abundance. So this morning, I want you to prepare your tithe and your offering. This is our third Sunday, and we are in the midst of Project 2021, which is uh, being able to make sure that our media team, our audio team, our video team have the necessary equipment in order to provide excellent ministry. As we've talked about on Vision Sunday and at other times, we've been renting cameras so that we can bring you an excellent experience. But we don't believe in renting, we believe in owning. And so I've asked our entire congregation to partner with us on the third Sunday of every month with a gift of $21 over and above your tithe and offering. If you're giving it in push pay, we ask that you would give it via special offering. You can give it separately so that we can make sure it is accounted for. If you're giving in, in cash app, make sure you label it. If you're sending in an envelope to the church, make sure that in your envelope you label that extra 21 for Project 2021. We're moving forward with our upgrades and we are so excited about what God is going to do as we continue to reach, to connect, to grow, and to serve. So let's sow at this time. I'm going to pray over your seed and then I'm going to give the benediction and then we will receive this week's announcements. Father, for every gift giver, tithe, tither, seed, and sower, we pray that you would bless it and them in the name of Jesus. We believe you for increase, abundance, and overflow. We speak over our seed. We declare that our seed has an assignment, it has a vision, it has a mission and a purpose. And the purpose that our seed has is to bring forth fruit and to bring forth harvest. We speak a 100-fold return on that which we give today. Thank you that you've already commanded people to be a blessing to us. Thank you, Lord, for unexpected financial increase from the north, the south, the east, and the west in the holy name of Jesus. We honor you, we love you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. And the people of God said, amen, amen, and amen. Let's receive our announcements at this time. These are your weekly announcements. March 28th, Palm Sunday service is at 10.30 a.m. There will be a Palm Sunday drive through and farewell parade where you will be able to pick up your palm branches and drop off a farewell gift for Pastor JP at the main campus, the main sanctuary, from 12.30 to 2 p.m. Join us for Word on Wednesday nights on the 17th and the 24th 
at 7 p.m. as our ministers in training will be sharing their initial sermons via Facebook. We were blessed last week and we're excited to hear from the next group this week. On March 30th at 7 p.m., we will witness the licensure ceremony and have communion. Children and youth emerging leaders will meet Sunday at 12.30 p.m. Join us for virtual VBI Tuesdays at noon and 7 p.m. Oasis is on Thursdays at 12 noon. Sunday school is Sunday mornings at 9, 10 a.m. Please note that next week we'll conclude the VBI semester. Prayer requests? Join the prayer ministry on the prayer line on Mondays and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. The number to call in is 386-222-7480. Have you joined Hope during our time of virtual worship? If you have or you need to be added to our email, text, and call lists, please contact the church office at by email at info at hopefellowship.org. Thank you.